Has your spouse or partner accused your boundaries of being controlling and not boundaries? <laughs> Maybe they're saying, stop trying to control me. You're trying, you're being too controlling when all you're trying to do is feel safe. And so you're laying these really important boundaries down and they just don't seem to understand that. If you find yourself taking some steps backward and going, wait a minute, am I being too controlling? Uh, is this boundary unrealistic? How do I know the difference? I want to help you do that. So stay tuned. Okay, so you have set boundaries, and if you have, good for you. We all need healthy boundaries, every single one of us. I actually have a playlist on here about the importance of having boundaries. I'm a huge advocate for them. But boundaries are about us, right? They're really not about the person we're in relationship with as much as it is about our need to feel safe and our need to set appropriate boundaries on what we are and are not okay with. So when we're setting boundaries, if you're going back and forth in your mind about, well, I don't know if, um, if you know, what I'm setting is appropriate. I don't know if, if this is just me trying to control his actions. I mean, I don't know if this is the right thing. Let me give you some questions to ask yourself as you're setting boundaries. So when you're determined to set a boundary, ask yourself the question, what is it that I want out of this boundary? What is, what's the outcome I want? And if your first response in your mind is, I want him to do this, this, and this. I want him to start doing that. I want him to realize this. I want him to see that. I want him to start treating me like this. If your answer is immediately about them, then perhaps your motive behind that boundary is to control an outcome. If instead your answer to the question is, I just want to feel safe enough to stay. Um, I want to feel valued. I want to know that I am being respected. I, I want to feel confident in my choice to stay. Whatever it is, if it's about you and how you want to feel, then you're probably setting an appropriate and important healthy boundary. I'll give you an example. If you set a boundary that says he will be home by 7 p.m. every night, and if he is not home by 7 p.m., you are going to leave. Uh, and you're setting that boundary and I said, okay, well, why are you setting that? You know, what is it that you want? What outcome do you want from him being home at 7 p.m. every night? Well, I want to know where he is because he's lied to me so much. I want to know that he's here. Oh, okay. But if you said to me, well, because I want to feel safe staying and I feel safer when he's here than when he's not here. If you were my client, I would go, okay, let's let's unpack that a little bit. If his presence is the only thing that keeps you safe, what boundary could you set to create safety that's not reliant upon what he does or does not do? Let's try to find a boundary that makes more sense. Perhaps we could set a boundary that is around transparency. So if you know where he is, let's say the two of you agree to use Life360 or something like that. That way, you know he's being transparent and open with you. Perhaps it's not his presence. His presence gives you a chance to keep an eye on him. But if he were being open with you, how could that help build trust? How could that be a different way to look at it? So instead of creating a boundary around determining what he is and is not allowed to do, perhaps it's a boundary around 
creating safety in openness and transparency through that openness and transparency. Setting boundaries needs to start with what you need, what you need. If you need to feel safe, what boundary can you set to help make that happen? If you need to know that you are being respected within your marriage and relationship, what do you need to experience that? You know, I think we need boundaries for ourselves. You know, are we going to set a boundary that says, I am only going to look at the affair partner's social media once a week? Uh, This is not healthy for me. Or do we need to set a boundary around, I need to be in therapy once a week? I mean, we we need boundaries for ourselves too. But it's easy for us who are betrayed. And I know this because I was in your shoes, right? It's easy for us to start using boundaries as a weapon and as a controlling mechanism and then okay here's another thing to ask yourself and then we'll wrap up the video if you set a boundary my question for you would be how would you respond if he did not do what that boundary said if you had a transparency boundary and he did not text you what are your next steps What are your next steps? What are you going to do if they don't honor that boundary? Because if your boundary is all about controlling their behavior, guess what? You have no control over their behavior. They're going to do what they're going to do. So are you prepared? If you set a boundary like that, are you prepared to follow through on any next steps or consequences associated with that boundary? So think about that. Think through your motives. Listen, a healthy marriage is not about control at all. A healthy marriage is about two people who respect each other's boundaries, two people who recognize that they're unique and and individual people that have the freedoms to be who they are within the healthy realm of the relationship. So the boundaries are about protecting you from any harm that the other person may be doing to you or protecting the relationship for any harm that either of you would do to the relationship. It's not about control. It's about us. You set a boundary. It's about you. So if your spouse or partner is saying something to you like, Hey, (laughs) you're being controlling that, you know, that's not a boundary. You're just trying to control me. If you're second guessing yourself, run those questions by, ask yourself, you know, why am I setting this? What is, what do I want out of this? Why am I setting this? And is this about me or is this about my partner? And maybe you just need to rephrase the boundary. Maybe you just need to re, um, restructure it slightly to make it more appropriate and not controlling. But think about it, run it through that and see what you come up with. But boundaries are really healthy and important. So please make sure you are setting them. It's important that you have them. I work on boundaries extensively with my clients. It's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Hence, I have an entire playlist on it on this channel. I believe that it's um, one of the many ways that we can heal through a fair recovery. If you're looking for someone to help you through that process of healing, um, through infidelity and building boundaries, enforcing boundaries, which is probably the harder part of that or anything else, I would love a chance to work with you. I give free consultations. That link uh, will show up in just a moment if it hasn't already, or you can sign up for a free consultation below. And I I look forward to working with you. It's a totally free one hour call with me. You get to experience coaching and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. Be sure you grab the freebies below as well. And uh, also make sure that you join my Facebook group if you haven't yet. It's only for wives. Uh, So it's women only guys, sorry. And uh, so join that. It's a great support system for betrayed spouses. I hope you'll take a moment to check that out as well. But check your boundaries, you know, run it through that litmus test and see if you can find a better structure for your 
boundaries if you find that they're just a bit too controlling.